Marine reptiles may have been much larger than previously thought. Dinosaurs were the largest creatures that ever walked the Earth. But prehistoric creatures also mastered water. And they were as huge as their terrestrial cousins. And maybe even bigger, as confirmed by recent finds. The fossilized bones of a giant sea creature that lived about 150 million years ago were found in a museum drawer. Paleontologists from the University of Portsmouth stumbled across the fossilized remains of a pleosaur by chance while visiting a museum. It was enough to open a drawer for the researchers to see a piece of the spine of an ancient creature from 150 million years ago. The author of this extraordinary discovery, or rather, this extraordinary discovery, is a pair of paleontologists from the University of Portsmouth, Professor David Martel and PhD student Megan Jacobs. And the place where they managed to do it is Abingdon County Hall Museum in Oxfordshire. But how do you discover something in a museum? It turns out that sometimes you just need to look around carefully and open what you need. Originally, scientists went there only to photograph the ichthyosaur. Professor Martel opened one of the drawers, and what he found in it after a long examination left him stunned. It was a bone, specifically, a spinal bone that was the size of a large dinner plate. Paleontologists found that, contrary to appearances, it does not necessarily have to belong to, for example, a dinosaur moving on the ground, but to a prehistoric reptile whose living environment was water. But what underwater giant reptiles lived those millions of years ago? We can certainly associate pleosaurs with such a formulation. They lived about 145 minus 152 million years ago, at the end of the Jurassic. Their body can be said to have a shape comparable to a teardrop. They had a rather short neck, but a large head. However, in their jaws there were powerful teeth, comparable to those belonging to the famous Tyrannosaurus, but they protruded from them as is the case, for example, with modern crocodiles. However, these giant aquatic hunters remained very little known for a long time. The only exception here was Leopleurodon, which even appeared on television as the hero of popular science programs. It was estimated that they weighed up to 150 tons and were 25 meters long. And these estimates of some scientists aroused considerable controversy. Because at that stage the world of science was not in possession of any fossils that would unequivocally prove that these creatures could reach such sizes. On the contrary, it was rather thought that their length could be at most 6 to 7 meters. And the discovery made in the aforementioned museum may change this situation. In general, scientists have four such fossils. Vertebrae found in the Kimmeridge Clay Formation on a farm in the River Thames Valley in Oxfordshire. It was decided to examine them using a tomograph, and then try to calculate the size of this reptile. It was found that it could range from 9.8 to 14.4 meters. So still not as much as 25 meters, but more than 7. But who knows? Maybe evidence will be discovered to confirm this hypothesis someday. Maybe they're even waiting for it quietly in another drawer. Plant control using artificial neurons. Scientists have developed artificial neurons that can integrate with natural biological systems. When connected to an American flycatcher, Electrical impulses from an artificial nerve cell caused the leaves of the carnivorous plant to close at the request of the scientists. The neuron developed by scientists from the University of Linköping in Sweden is built of organic transistors. A team of scientists has been conducting research on the integration of artificial neurons with living organisms for years. 
Earlier versions of the device were organic electrochemical systems printed on a thin plastic film made of polymers that can conduct both electrons and ions. They imitate the ionic mechanism of generating impulses, action potential, in plants. These circuits form the basis of transistors. In the new research, the team optimized the transistors and used them to build artificial neurons and synapses. He also connected them with biological systems. The research results were published in the journal Nature Communications. In 2018, researchers at Linkoping University developed printed organic electrochemical circuits with polymers that conduct negative and positive charges. This made it possible to build organic electrochemical transistors. The group then optimized the organic transistors so that they could be mass printed on thin plastic film. On one such substrate, scientists print thousands of transistors. Together with colleagues at Lund and Gothenburg universities, the researchers used printed transistors to mimic the neurons and synapses of a biological system. For the first time, we are using the transistor's ability to switch based on ion concentration to modulate the pulse frequency, says Dr. Padiner Kolokal Harakesh, co-author of the study. The frequency of the pulses gives a signal that causes the biological system to react. In tests, scientists connected the developed neuron with a plant, the American flycatcher, Dianaea muscipula. We chose the American flycatcher to clearly show how we can steer a biological system with an artificial organic system and get him to communicate in the same language, says Professor Simone Fabiano of Linkoping University, lead author of the study. We have shown that the connection between the neuron and the synapse has the ability to learn, in line with the Hebbian theory. Information is stored in the synapse, thanks to which signaling becomes more and more effective, adds Professor Fabian. According to the theory, repeated activation of individual synapses strengthens the neurons on both sides, making this signal more effective over time. When the transistors detect concentrations of ions with certain charges, they switch producing a signal that can then be picked up by other neurons. Biological neurons operate on the same ion signals, which means that artificial and natural nerve cells can be combined. In tests with the American flycatcher, electrical impulses from artificial neurons were sufficient to force the plant to close the so-called trap leads. The researchers hope their efforts will lead to the production of sensitive, responsive human prostheses, implantable systems for mitigating neurological diseases, and soft, intelligent robotics. We have developed ion neurons, similar to our own, that can be linked to biological systems. Organic semiconductors have many advantages. They are biocompatible, biodegradable, soft and formable. They only require low voltage to operate, which is completely harmless to both plants and vertebrates, explains Dr. Chi Yuan Yang, co-author of the publication.